Let us pray. O Almighty God, who pourest out on all who desire it the spirit of grace and of supplication, deliver us when we draw near to thee from coldness of heart and wanderings of mind, that with steadfast thoughts and kindled affections we may worship thee in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And be now and Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given to us, your servants, grace. By the confession of a true faith, to acknowledge the glory of the eternal trinity, and in the power of your divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith and worship, and bring us at last to see you in your one and eternal glory. O Father, who with the Son and the Holy Spirit live and reign, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost. For I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth and with it and said, Now this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed, and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here I am, send me. The word of the Lord. We will read from Psalm 29 responsively by half verse. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The voice of the Lord splits the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe. And in the temple of the Lord, The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord shall give strength to his people. A reading from the Epistle to the Romans. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear 
but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if, in fact, we suffer with him, so that we may, may also be glorified with him. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Lord, now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born? After having grown old, can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses. And you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? 
Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. I want to tell you a story about a woman in prison who comes regularly to our Thursday night Bible study at the Virginia Correctional Center for Women in Goochland County. Her name is Michelle. She's probably in her late 30s, and she has been incarcerated for the last seven years, and I have a feeling she's due up for parole within the next year or year and a half. Her father's been ill for several months this past year, and his kidneys are failing, and therefore he's been on dialysis over the weeks. It got so bad that just three weeks ago they admitted him to the hospital for more tests. Quickly, he was diagnosed with stage four pancreatic and liver cancer, and has now gone to his bones. It seemed to happen overnight, she said. Three weeks ago, medical persons called Michelle at the prison and highly suggested that she get a pass to come and visit her father. She knew that even though she was locked up in prison, and that applying for a visit to someone outside the prison was highly unlikely. Her faith in God was so strong that she wanted to try anyway. Requests for visiting are usually denied, but she knows that all things are possible through God. So she submitted her request to visit her father, and it was granted. A couple of days later, she was suited up in her orange typical prison jumpsuit, and it indicated and labeled on her outfit that she was property of the Virginia State Department of Corrections. Her wrists were shackled together, as well as her feet being shackled together, about one foot apart, so you can imagine trying to walk with chains on your ankles connected by another chain. 
She was placed into a state van, and let me just tell you what a state van looks like if you're in prison. There are two seats in front, one for each of two guards, and immediately behind the guards is this steel grate panel, and below the panel are these hooks so that when the prisoners get in the vans, they are hooked immediately by the wrist to that hook on the grate. And then there's another hook yet on the floor, and the chain that, that locks together their ankles is latched in to that hook. So there is absolutely no movement. It was about a two and a half hour drive to Newport News. That's her hometown, and that's where her father was hospitalized. When they got to the hospital, the two guards got out and helped Michelle get out of the van and they started to escort her to her father's room. It must have been very humiliating and sad and scary for Michelle to be seen dressed like this. This was her hometown. Maybe she would see old friends. Maybe she would see personnel that she used to work with. But I have a feeling that her focus wasn't on what others thought. I have a feeling all she could think about was getting up to her father's room to see him. So as she walked up to his room, one foot at a time, one could hear systematic and rhythmic clanging of iron chains on the concrete. That must have been chilling for someone to witness. Can't you just imagine hearing that sound as you sit quietly in this church today. Here is this woman who has committed unlawful deeds and has been caged in a prison behind bars, away from the world, and is now making her first public appearance, chained. When she got to her father's room, they both seemed to forget for a moment, the present situation. No guilt, no past sins, no wrongdoings were evident. It was a moment in time where God erased the past to make room for his love to conquer all. Michelle has been blessed with a very beautiful gift of singing. And she's so good that in the last three years, she has been chosen as the gospel choir director. When she saw her dad, the first thing that he said was, Michelle, would you sing for me? Michelle stood there in front of her father, shackled still in that orange jumpsuit, totally humiliated. She replied to him, Daddy, would you sing for me? She told us that even though he was very tired and weak, he sang his heart out so beautifully. And I bet that's exactly how she will remember him. Not as a man dying in his bed, but as a man with a beautiful voice. As of today, I only know that Michelle is pretty much staying to herself. But last Thursday night, she decided to venture down to the religious library, which is just down the hall from where we have our study group. She knew that we probably wanted to see her because we just love her so much. So she came to our room and said, hey, y'all. And we said, hey, Michelle. And one of my volunteers said, how's your dad? The dreaded question to ask. We had no idea whether he had died or whether he was living. And she said, well, I don't know. I got a call this morning from the hospital, and they're discontinuing all his life support today. He could be dead right now, and I don't know it. But. I know that God is with me and is with him. And I want you all to know I am okay. 
Our faith in God absolutely reassures us that we are never, ever alone in anything that we do. Imagine, if you will, thinking back to the Isaiah reading today. He is, Isaiah is sitting in the Holy Temple in Jerusalem, and he feels the weight of his guilt and disobedience, not only of himself, but of the people of Israel. Just as Michelle felt the weight of her disobeying the rules in her life and now living in a prison, away from family, away from friends, but at this very moment was being touched by God. Suddenly, something very unbelievable happened to Isaiah. He had a vision. He's sitting there in this holy temple, and all of a sudden, the Lord is sitting on this throne right in front of him, and the hem of the Lord's robe fills the entire temple. I have a feeling that when Michelle entered her father's room, that nothing else seemed to exist except for that divine presence of God's compassion filling that small hospital room. Heavenly creatures, often called seraphs, were flying high above Isaiah, and they even had human voices, and they said among themselves, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God of hosts. Heaven is full of his glory. Then I thought once again about Michelle and the glory of God that she must have felt when her eyes looked at her dad's eyes. As the seraph spoke, the pins in the temple doors were moving and shook the doors open. The temple filled with smoke from the burning coals on the altar as a divine presence was there. Isaiah must have felt stunned and humbled with what he was seeing. How might any of you feel if you were experiencing a divine visit or experience from God? And I feel certain that many of you in this room have felt that divine presence in some way in your life. After the seraph spoke, one of them flew down to Isaiah and touched his mouth with a burning coal. This was done to relieve Isaiah of any guilt or sin. It was a cleansing. It was done so that he could be sent forth as a prophet of the Lord to speak on behalf of the Lord. Isaiah's life changed because he experienced the power of God. It is in scripture readings, similar to this one, that we are able to have faith in the mystery of God and who he is. Over the past several weeks, we have revisited the birth of God, the Son. We know about his teachings, his healings, his casting out of demons. We know of his arrest and eventual crucifixion and death. And we know about the power of his mighty resurrection. And we know of his ascension in heaven to join his Father. And just last Sunday, Pentecost Sunday, we know of the Holy Spirit of God descending upon the early church to guide us on our journey to our Father in heaven through Jesus Christ. Today, we celebrate Trinity Sunday, or God, who is known to us as the three in one, or the one in three. Our faith calls us to believe in God as the Father, as God as the Son, and God as the Holy Spirit. This is a hard concept to understand. The mystery of God is a mystery and cannot be completely understood by us. After writing this first draft, I knew I needed a little help. So I went to my mentoring priest, Randy, and he was able to help me to articulate the words and thoughts that I had 
in order to put them on paper. We are called to trust in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we have been given three very powerful ways in which to experience God's presence in our lives. In John's Gospel reading today, Jesus tries to explain to Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews, about being born from above, or as many people today say, being born again. To me, this new birth, this rebirth, means we trust God, being the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, as three persons in one. It really is a mystery, and yet, it is also our faith. Isaiah had a powerful and incredible experience of God in the temple, and each one of us can also experience God in many ways, just as Michelle experienced God through her love for her father and her father's love for her. I believe the two most courageous things we can ever do is to look for God in our daily living and to respond to God's call by acting on whatever we believe we have seen or heard in our faith, knowing in our hearts that God is our most perfect guide. May you have the experience knowing that God the Father who made you, God the Son who redeems you, and God the Holy Spirit who sustains you by always being in your heart. Let us pray. Father in heaven, I pray that these words that have come from my mouth today have truly come from you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, as one being. Amen. Let us stand and recall the ancient teachings of the church in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all that is seen and unseen. And we believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. And for our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. And we believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us kneel together in prayer and open our hearts to God. Gracious God, we pray today for the church, for the men and women of faith throughout the world who strive to serve you in word and deed. Amen. 
We pray for metropolitan Richmond, the Commonwealth of Virginia, and these United States. By your Holy Spirit, guide our leaders in all government agencies to serve your people. We pray for our world and for refugees everywhere. We pray for our partners in mission locally and around the world. We pray for the oppressed and all those who struggle for freedom and justice. We pray for peace among the nations and for an end to war. We pray for our enemies and for all who would do us harm. We pray for the men and women of our armed forces who serve in places of conflict. Keep them safe and grant them courage to serve with honor. May we forgive each other just as you have forgiven us. We pray for the poor and the suffering, for the lost and the unloved, for those in prison and for those who live without hope. May we be instruments of your grace in the world. We pray for our families and friends, for the sick, the elderly, and those who have died, that all who have asked for our prayers will know God's healing power. And your peace, which passes all understanding, be theirs and ours this day. In our parish family, we pray for the sick and those in need, remembering especially John Calvin Bernard, Hugh Campbell, Maxie Cannon, Geneva Carson, Witt Clement, Ginny Cohn, Russell Ferguson, mm -hmm. Ashley Bloomer Kolitz, Jerry Porter, Mary Robinson, Jenny Scherer, Lloyd Spruill, Lynn Stott, Jane Thompson, Ginny Tilson, Mike Ward, Betty Whitehurst, Stacy Zaldumbade, Patricia and Stan. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the births of Alexander John Woodson, son of Christina and Benjamin Woodson, and grandson of Sandy and Chip Woodson, and for Reese Evan Harrington, son of Ross Evan and Rory Margaret Harrington, and grandson of Mimi Harrington and Dave Johnson, both who were born recently. We give you thanks for the lives and ministries of all who celebrate their birthday today, especially Taffy Williams, Lisa Gray, Richard Rhodes, Jennifer Barbie, Mason Jordan, Becky Beckett Thorpe, and Adeline Clark. And in the sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life, we remember the Reverend Dr. H. King Omig, who died recently, and Mr. and Mrs. Alan Zachary, Jr., in whose memory the flowers at the altar are given. Almighty God, you have taught us to do justice, love kindness, and to walk humbly before you. Make us doers of your word, that throughout the world your name may be praised and your people served. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. Glory of your name. Amen. 
Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Good morning, St. James's. Welcome to all of you on this beautiful day, the last Sunday in May. We're glad that you're here with us. Welcome to any who may be visiting with us today. We're glad that you're here and a part of our parish family. And those who are joining us by way of the internet, we're glad that you are with us also. We will be having coffee and refreshments outside today, I believe, so I hope you'll join us for some refreshments and fellowship after the service. Several announcements for you. First, I want to thank Sally Gunn. Sally is our deacon in training, if you haven't met Sally. She is with us for one year, and she's about halfway through her year right now. And as part of her training with us, she preaches three times over that year period. And this is Sally's second sermon ever. And what a great job she did. As you can probably tell from Sally's sermon, her passion and ministry for 16 years has been prison ministry, particularly at the woman's prison in Goochland. And she'll be having a meeting following church in room 205 of the Misha House next door for anyone who might be interested in being a part of prison ministry or learning more about it. So if you would like to learn more about what Sally does and maybe If you have an interest um, taking part, meet her in room 205 of the Misha House following this service. Today is the last day for our parish choir for the summer. They all go off to the Bahamas and stay there all summer long. (laughs) Don't you wish? Yeah, you all throw there. My thanks to them for their great music all year long and the wonderful gift that they are. And although we're happy for him, I'm very sad to say that this is Stephen Ralph's last Sunday with us. Stephen has been a great, incredible addition to our choir for how many years, Stephen? Seven. Did you hear that voice? You know that voice. Seven. (laughs) Stephen is off to Manhattan. Is that right, Stephen? And he'll be using his great gifts up there, but from his singing on Sunday to the gifts he's given to us at the feast with his voice, we've really been blessed. Stephen, stand up, come up here to the front, and let's give you some thanks. Stephen, when you make it big, just remember all the little people in your life. <laughs> we will miss you in, your, in our prayers. Several more announcements for your chimes is full of announcements. I hope you will note those. Next week is Founders Sunday when we celebrate our, kind of our annual birthday party for the church. We'll be having a big cake. It's when we remember and give thanks for all those who have come before upon whose shoulders we stand now. And um, there will be um, a special uh, reception afterwards with birthday cake. And next Sunday at 6 o'clock, we have our party in the Misha House to celebrate the first 20 years of the Whitmires being with us. 
Notice I said the first 20, that's very important. So I hope you'll come be with us. And then the Whitmires on um, the following week head off for sabbatical for the summer. And uh, so I hope you'll come be with us at six o'clock in uh, the Valentine Hall. And then on the 14th, we say goodbye to Mark Cooper. And what a uh, sad the thing that is to say goodbye to Mark. But Mark goes to Manhattan as well. He's not following Stephen, that's just a big city. <laughs> Mark will be pursuing his writing in New York, but we'll get him back. And so come join us on the 14th as we give thanks for Mark's ministry among us. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God. Lord be with you. 
Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, for with your co-eternal Son and Holy Spirit you are one God, one Lord, in trinity of persons and in unity of being, and we celebrate the one and equal glory of you, O Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation. In the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil. You have made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night in which he was betrayed, he died for us. Our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we we remember his death. We proclaim his resurrection. We await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from our, your creation this bread and this wine. And we pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that we may, they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in this sacrifice that we may be acceptable to him through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things under subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints and James, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, the author of our salvation. By him, with him, in him, In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Exactly. 
The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food. In the sacrament of the Father, you Now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. The Lord be gracious unto you and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.